Hello everybody, my name is Reagan Trevino and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to open up and do a comeback video talking about my infertility story. I don't know where I'm at in the story, I don't know if I'm at the beginning, the middle, or the end, but I wanted to share it and then start bringing you guys along with me with it because I just feel like it's a space that is often talked about before or after somebody's gone through it and that middle part isn't often talked about or shown and I just want to be somebody that shows that. I've taken a pretty long break from social media and YouTube because I honestly didn't know what to film. I still have been doing all my financy things and I may come back and do videos with that but I needed a break to kind of decide what I wanted to do and what route I wanted to go down. And for me, this is something that I really feel is on my heart to share with people. If you don't want to hear this, if it doesn't pertain to you, or if you are super, super close to me and you don't want to know all the details, then just go ahead and click on out of this video. But I wanted to share it for the people who need to hear it and who need to feel like they're not alone going through something. So I know that people's stories all differ. Some people's are way longer than mine. Some people's are way shorter than mine. And I wanted to start this video off by saying whatever your infertility is like is valid. And it's, it's your own story. And I do not want this to ever be a place where we are comparing stories, but this is a place to share stories and go alongside each other to go through something. Nobody's is better, nobody's is worse. It's all hard for people as they're going through it. So I just want to put that out there and make it very, very clear. I feel like sometimes women can be really harsh and be like, well, you know what? Mine was worse. Or you know what? That's not even infertility. And I'm just saying right here and right now that you cannot dismiss somebody else's story and everybody's story is valid. So I just wanted to start off by saying that without further ado, I'm going to stop rambling and I'm going to tell you the story of how my infertility has unfolded. I have been dealing with infertility for about 13 to 15 ish months and I'll get into why it's kind of dicey on the timeline and what I mean by infertility a little bit later in the story but I had done a video on my channel it's on here somewhere talking about my birth control experience and that's kind of where this experience leaves off I had talked about how I was on the depo shot and what one year later after the depo shot was like so I'm kind of picking up off of that story if you want to go see that I will link it somewhere down below up here so that you can watch that after you watch this video and you can kind of get a sense of where I'm coming from. To this day, I do not know how much of my infertility has been contributed from the depo shot. I have no idea. I have been told by my doctor at this point that it can cause a woman to have a hard time to get pregnant for up to two years, which is something that I was not aware of when I took that shot. I took the depo shot last in October of 2020. Two. I had decided to take the depot shot because I was having intense migraines and I was having a lot of my dysautonomia issues at the time. I decided very quickly when I got that shot, it's like something in me was like, I actually want a kid soon. I think not having the ability to get pregnant kind of showed me that that was something that I didn't want to prevent. And I just started praying about it. It wasn't something I just got married in December. It wasn't something that I was going to like hop on, but I started reading books about fertility. I started trying to just say, I want to learn how to figure out if I'm ovulating. So that was kind of the first step into the zone. Now the depot shot wore off in January of 2023 and I did not get my first period until April. During all of that time, though I started my tracking and from then on out my cycle was completely irregular and I could not find my ovulation. I started out by doing just temperatures and um, I was doing basal body temperatures every single day and I was charting it in natural cycles. I had heard great things about that. I was trying to track my cervical mucus which I'm just gonna call CM for the rest of this video but I was trying to do those two things. My temperatures were all over the place. My periods and my cycles were all over the place, anywhere from 70 days to 12 days. It would be like 12, 26, 50, 30, 45, 19. They were just going all over the place. My cervical mucus was not following any sort of pattern. It was very, very random. I tried doing this for a while and just thought, 
maybe my temperatures aren't working because I have dysautonomia and I don't regulate my temperatures very well. So maybe um, that's messing it up. I believed that for a very long time. And at this point, I wouldn't say that we were like, trying trying but I was trying to find my ovulation and I could not find it no matter what I did I couldn't find it but you can't really try if you can't find an ovulation so it's very it's very difficult anyways I do that for a while the temperature in the CM it's not working so I decide to start doing ovulation sticks in addition to I keep doing this this is probably mid summer of 2023 I'm like okay let's try something different let's try the ovulation strips they all looked the same. Like no matter what day I took it in my cycle, they all looked the same. And none of them were above the threshold of being like positive. Some were very, very close, but none of them were positive. It was probably June or July where I was like, I need some help. I need to contact a gynecologist. And I needed a new one at that point. So I had reached out and I could not get an appointment until October. That gave me time to see, see if I could find ovulation on my own and also track it so I can show them like, here is my temperatures. Here's all my tracking. Here are my ovulation test strips. Do you think I'm ovulating? Because again, at this point, I thought I was crazy. I was like, I can't find it, but maybe I'm just missing it. I never really got emotional during all of this time because I, I knew that I was just kind of in the, the early phase Phases of it and I figured it would take some time so I wasn't really discouraged or anything like that. So I do all of this until October and there's some months where I just kind of give up and I'm kind of like you know what I'm not doing the temperatures every day I took it like every other day but anyways I go to my gynecologist October of 2023. This is a full year after I got my depo shot. My gynecologist is like yeah you're not ovulating like we can see on your chart you're definitely not ovulating um, based on your temperatures. And so they had said that they can do three months of Provera. And other than that, to try to see if my cycles would regulate. And other than that, I would need to go see a fertility specialist. And so I was like, okay, let's try the Provera. So all I know was it was days 15 through 25. And then I would start bleeding soon after. So we were trying to make my periods more like 28 to 30 day cycles instead of the craziness of all of it. It didn't really work. One month worked, one month where it was like a 28 or 30 day cycle and my temperature rose just like it was supposed to. It stayed high and all of this stuff and it was great. So I thought maybe I just needed to sync my cycles. The other two months completely flopped. I had breakthrough bleeding on day like nine of my cycle one of the times and then I got confused and I didn't know whether to start over or what to do. So it was kind of a fail. And then by the third cycle, I just, I'm pretty sure I had breakthrough bleeding on day like 12 of my cycle. So I didn't even get to start the Provera. I honestly just like forgot about it. I was like, whatever, the one cycle worked. And so now I know that my temperatures and my body can do, like it, my chart can look right basically. Um, we did definitely try that month and it just nothing happened. December was the month that I decided I'm ready to go see a fertility specialist. Don't know what that's gonna entail, but I need help. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. And so at that point, I reached out to one in town and I had created an appointment that was gonna be at the end of December. And then I was going along, still doing my tracking, and somebody mentioned an amazing fertility specialist that they had heard so many great things about, they had personal experiences with, and I had three different people tell me about her. And she had told me like that people that have my condition have gone to her and been really successful with it. And so I canceled my appointment and I reached out to see if I could get an appointment with her and she had stopped practicing for the time being. But at that point, I didn't know. I'm just like, all I know is she stopped practicing. Then January rolls around and I realize that I have fertility benefits through Erin's work, which is amazing. I don't really even know how to explain it much, but we get so much money that we can use at certain places um, or we can buy certain at home tests, we can buy um, just different things. And so I was like, oh my gosh, like this is really cool. And so I decided to make an appointment um, with the one that I canceled with. And that one was at the end of January. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get my Mira, I'm gonna get an at-home fertility test, and I'm gonna get one for Aaron to do his own testing, just so we can see our numbers. And they're very like vetted sites. And so I was super excited about the Mira. It came in like middle of March, I would say. 
Um, it took a while to get it all set up. I found out about it in January and I got it in mid-March. Um, and then right a week before my appointment in January, four people came and told me about this other person that was amazing. It was the same person the other girl had told me about. And so I started looking her up and realized that she was actually practicing but at a different location. And so I canceled my appointment again and I created one with her, but it wasn't until April. But I was like, you know what? This is good. I get to do my mirror testing. I get to test like my AMH, my FSH. I get to do all those things. I get to test my thyroid again and everything like that. I start my mirror tracking mid-March and I was so excited. I was like, oh, Oh my gosh if I was missing ovulation like I will see it now and I did not ovulate and that's when I came to see my specialist and I love her so that's kind of the backstory I go and see my fertility specialist for the first time on April 22nd and as soon as I got there we did a transvaginal ultrasound and um, we did some blood work what we found and we looked at my mirror chart as well she was like that's amazing to have this mirror chart it's like me being able to see your hormones at home um, in real time what all of that said was my uterus looked great my right ovary looked great but I had a 3.3 centimeter cyst on my left ovary. Basically, what these three things confirmed with my Mira, my blood work, and the ultrasound was that I was having an estrogen dominance because of the cyst, and that was causing me to not ovulate because my FSH and my LH levels were not able to rise like they should to spark a mature follicle to grow and then be released. That's the best way that I understood it. I may be off a little bit and I'm sorry if I am. Definitely don't take this as like medical advice. So we came up with kind of a plan. She told me that I could get an SHG if I wanted or I can kind of put that on hold and wait until we get the cyst like figured out, which is what we ended up deciding to do. We decided to do lectures also. So I went into the doctor on day two of my cycle, which could not have like gone better in terms of like not having to wait or anything. And so she had told me we are gonna start lectures all for five days, five mg tomorrow on day three. So I did day three through seven of Letrozole and I recorded all of this footage and I'm gonna make a video about it and upload it later. So I actually took y'all through my process, my symptoms, my mirror results and everything like that. If I hadn't ovulated 10 days after my last day of Letrozole, I was supposed to call her office and let her know that I didn't ovulate and come back in to get an ultrasound of the cyst again. She had felt like the Letrozole would lower my estrogen which would hopefully get rid of the cyst and then allow my body to ovulate also. Yeah, I completely trust my doctor and so that has been really 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 nice um, and I've just been really reminding myself that God really is the author of life and it is not us. We do not decide when we have children and there's a peace in knowing that. Like when my time comes, my time comes. And I was reading Psalm 1 the other day and I feel like the Psalms just speak to you at different points in your life, different things. And this one was really talking about how the one that seeks righteousness, basically he will bear fruit in his season and his leaf will not wither. And for me, that moment when I read it was the first day that I started my Letrozole and it was like a signal of like, you will bear fruit, literally bear a child in the season that you were meant to. And in the meantime, your joy won't wither. Your leaf won't wither. Like you will stand firm. Your roots are deep in God and you will be fine. And I've never hit that moment of like hopelessness. Um, I know that it helps that I'm young and I know, I know all of that. But at the end of the day, it really is this like trust and learning how to just be present right now and be thankful for where I am right now. There are definitely things that are hard. It's hard to watch people have kids around me. It's hard to see other people pregnant. All of that definitely hits me in ways. But just remembering like my time will come when I am most ready for it in God's eyes and in his will and his plan and you know I've prayed for so many years like let my will be aligned with your will and then here something's not going according to plan and I need to trust it like I that's what I've been praying for and so it's just really trusting the whole plan trusting the doctors and God most of all and Aaron and, and myself and just all of the things um, and enjoying life in the process. I'm actually trying to get our finances under control and get some debt 
paid off in the process and so I'm really excited about some of those things. That was kind of my story in a nutshell. I definitely am going to be doing videos of me being on Eletrazole um, and kind of all of those things following my health and fertility and stuff like that. If you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up um, to let me know that you want to see more of them. And yeah that's all I have to say. I'm sorry if that was scrambled. That is definitely just like a spur of the moment. I'm starting this series and I'm starting it right now. So let's do it. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.